The other day I had the honor of being on Ron Smith's show on WBAL in Baltimore. Ron has long been the radio voice of liberty in the Washington, D.C. area. If the people of Baltimore will excuse me for including them in that. If you think of the one place that needs Ron Smith, it's that area. So on Ron's show, I had a federal employee get very upset with me, and I thought you'd enjoy hearing our exchange. Welcome back to the Ron Smith Show with Martin Mossberg and Ron Smith. Coming up, we're going to speak with Lou Rockwell. He's editor of LouRockwell.com. He's a columnist and author, and he has a great piece on the real 1% that you can find on the Ron Smith page on WBAL.com. The evil 1%. Good morning, Lou. Good morning, Ron. Good morning, Marta. Good morning. You know, it's so funny hearing about the, you know, the 1% is always seen as the rich bankers, but you have quite a different take on that, Lou. Well, I think that there is an evil 1% in the country, but it's not rich business people who, for the vast majority of them, are huge benefits to the human race, not people who don't subtract from human flourishing, but rather add to it. But there is an evil 1%, and it's the government. I mean, it's the, and I'm not talking about like the average public school teacher when I come up with this 1%, but I'm talking about the top people in the military, the welfare state, the federal government, the state governments, the local governments, the governing class in that sense is about 1% of the population. The, the actual size of the government, of course, is far bigger, but the people, the decision makers are about 1%. Those are the people who are oppressing the, uh, the rest of us in the 99%. They're and the it's ones a fine job they're on. doing, Lou. <laughs> yeah, no, they're, they are doing fine. They're, you know, they're living it up uh, as... Uh, yeah, nothing one, has changed for them. No, and if one were to venture from uh, wonderful Baltimore down to the uh, uh, District of Predators there south of you, you see they're all living very well. This is, of course, the richest area in the country, one of the richest areas in the world. Uh, they've all got their limos and their mansions and their restaurants and fancy stores, and they're all doing very well. But, of course, they're all parasites. So it's important to, to keep in mind that the 1% is a parasite on the 99%, and they are doing huge damage to us, whether it's economically or in terms of our civil liberties, thinking that they can feel us up at the airport and listen, you know, read our emails, listen to our phone calls, listen to radio shows like yours, Ron, which are uh, subversive in the best sense by telling the truth. Um, they don't like this sort of thing, so they'd like to spray pepper spray in our faces if they could get away with it. So that's the one percent, and I think that's the that's the people we need well, to keep an eye on. They're not public servants, as they like to term themselves. They well, um, Lou and Ron, we have a caller who would like to to speak about in defense of the parasites, as he says. Okay. Uh, let's go to Bill. How are you doing, Bill? Okay. Uh, first of all, I'd like to uh, wish Ron Smith the very best in this uh, terrible battle against 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 the illness that he has. I disagree I with Mr. It. Smith on most things, but I do wish him the very best. Okay? Thank you. Mm -hmm. Okay, number two. I really take issue with Mr. Rockwell calling our government workers parasites. Now, in the first place, a lot of those government workers that are civilians, not even military, that work in our intelligence agencies are one of the reasons that we got bin Laden. Some of those parasites that Mr. Rockwell has been labeling as people who do not contribute to our society, and that includes the TSA, are people who are quite arguably helping to protect his butt so he can get on your show and shoot his big mouth off. And I find his words disgraceful. Well, Lou, would you like to respond? Well, we can know they're parasites because they earn their money by force. It's not like a voluntary market transaction where we can know that somebody is valuable. These guys put a gun to your head and say, pay up or you're going to jail, resist, and we will kill you. That is the nature of the government. So the government is the one institution in society which claims and exercises the right to initiate violence against the innocent. And, of course, we're supposed to be thankful for this. By the way, government employees, on average, at all levels, make double what the victim taxpayer makes. Double. These are our overlords. They live it up. They do relatively little work. And as to our intelligence agencies, they're part of the whole military industrial complex that brought on 9-11 because we've been meddling in other people's countries for all these years, establishing dictators, overthrowing their governments, doing all kinds of horrendous torturing, killing, as I say, installing dictators, Mubarak, the Shah, all the bunch of them. It caused backlash. And so the rest of us in this country who weren't part of the so-called intelligence agencies suffered from what these people did to us. As to the TSA, the idea that they should be able to feel you up, feel up your sexual organs to get on a plane, 
and even to take off your shoes. No civilized country in the world, by the way, makes you take off your shoes. This is an old CIA tactic to make you humiliated and to make you easy to control. It has nothing to do with security. This is all security theater. One of the things about people who go into the government and rise to the top, and this is not everybody in the government, but the people who rise to the top like crushing others. They like putting their boot on your throat. They get a charge out of it. Some of them like killing people. They like bombing other countries. They get a, they get a kick out of it. So do we want more of this kind of conduct in society? Do we want less? Already we have the biggest, most powerful, richest government in the history of the world by many magnitudes, the U.S. government. And of course now they're telling us with their ridiculous super committee stuff that of course we have to pay more taxes to them, let them be even richer, and make us poorer. The U.S. government is making every single American taxpayer poorer, and we should keep that in mind when they now are telling us they want more money, more power, they want you to be entirely naked before them in every sense, to control you, to run your life, run your family, run your business, run your school, run your community, and you are just supposed to salute and say, yes, sir, here's my wallet, here's my child, here's my life. Uh -uh. A lot of us are now saying, no, we're not going to do it. May I uh, just respond with just a couple of sentences? Sure. Go ahead. So somehow, according to the great Mr. Rockwell, we have a Gestapo totalitarian society with a jackboot on our throats, telling us that if we do not conform to the laws and the principles of the United States, we will be executed or maybe thrown into a 21st century style Auschwitz. And the reason that 3,000 people got blown to pieces on 9-11 is because of the CIA and our other intelligence agencies. I'm going to hang up. I've seen some raving lunatics on your show, Ron Smith, but this guy takes well, the you, cake. Well, you actually haven't, you haven't seen them. You've heard them. <laughs> Maybe on YouTube. You know, the, the no, U.S. government, by the way, in, in just in, we'll just take the case of Iraq, killed a million people in this whole adventure in Iraq, that, a country that had never done anything to us, and uh, overthrow a secular regime, which, of course, they're now doing it in Syria, too, so they can bring the Islamic fundamentalists to power to make more trouble, because empires love trouble. It gives them the reason to expand. U.S. has got 900 military bases in other people's countries. We feel perfectly free to send in the predator drones and kill people and we're supposed to think that doesn't cause a problem for us. It doesn't cause people to hate our guts. Why do we mind our own business? We've got plenty of problems in this country we need to worry about. We're in a depression. We need to worry about that. We cannot afford this empire. It's immoral, and it's only good for the Wolfowitzes and the uh, Lockheeds and, and the Boeings and all and those it's guys. Failing. Yeah, and it's, it's failing. Right. I think that's why, as we were talking about earlier, that Ron Paul's message is resonating so much now and that it, it will get the light of day because it, it's just it's imminent and people feel it. Well, we're supposed to be like this, you know, take this gentleman's advice and just trust the government, give them everything, let them run us because they've got our best interest at heart. You know what? No, they don't. This is a great myth. The government's got the government's interest at heart. They don't have the people's interest at heart. Their interest is to take all our money, run our lives, and uh, make sure that we obey or otherwise put us in a cage. It's not Auschwitz, but it's, a, you know, it's one of these massive numbers of government cages that exist in this country. They like to put you in a cage, and it's you know, horrendous, and they want to spray the pepper spray in your face and all the rest of it. So are we supposed to think we need more of that conduct, or maybe do we need a slash, and that doesn't even begin to describe what needs to be done, to the government, especially the federal government, which, of course, also has the ambition to be the world government. Well, you know, you look at, I mean, you look throughout history and just at when when movements take take shape or take off, and it often takes decades and decades. I mean, I, earlier this year, I read Amazing Grace about William Wilberforce, force, excuse me, uh, ending the slave trade over in Britain. And I mean, this was this man's lifelong uh, quest. And, you know, it took 20 years on uh, on the first half to end, a, end the slave trade, and then, you know, many more to end slavery. So it's... That's just one of the situations that shows that politically, if you, you know, any any issue can, you know, even if it if it resonates with a lot of people it made, you know, you need near collapse before it actually is taken seriously. And let's not forget that slavery was a government institution yes. made possible only by government. Because, of course, the slave runs away, the government catches him and sends him back. Well, not a huge tax interest as a result of uh, the landowners who were making tons of money. Yeah. So, I mean, this is. And, and Auschwitz is a gov was a government institution, too, we remember when the gentleman was mentioning that. So this is, the, I would argue, the great enemy of mankind on Earth, the state. And I think people are waking up. It has taken decades. But Ron Paul has been talking about this sort of thing since the middle 1970s, the early 1970s. 
in public life, and he really has changed millions of minds. I mean, it's ama- you know, when you wonder what one person can do, you just have to look at the life of Ron Paul, or I might add the life of Ron Smith, too. People can change huge numbers of minds, can change hearts, and can enlighten people so they're not going to put up with this anymore.